Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial series. My name is Braldev, and in this episode, we'll be discussing about data types. So again, this is the next coding fundamental um, concept that we need to know for scripting to become a better scripter. Now, what we're going to do for this episode is actually create a new script so that we can organize our scripts uh, when we go further down the line with this tutorial guide. Because if we were to go back to the scripts that we've been making throughout this tutorial, um, it can get very lengthy, very fast if we used the same script throughout the entire tutorial guide. So what I'm actually going to do is go back to our game and I'm going to go to the right side of the workspace and I'm going to go down to this property here that says enabled. So I'm actually going to uncheck this property so that when the game runs, so if I hit play, then whatever we put inside of the script isn't going to run in the output because it's now disabled, so the script isn't going to fire when we join into the game. And so that is a property that um, you might find to be useful if you were to have scripts that you don't want to execute when the game runs inside of Studio or just in the game in general. So now what I'm going to do is hit stop, and now we want to create a new script for this episode. Uh, and to make this more organized, what I'm going to do is actually rename the script on the right side here. So I'm going to right click on the script and I'm going to hit this button that says rename and it's going to highlight the name right here. So what we can do is basically just delete this and we can insert a new name here. So I'm going to rename this to printing data types just like this and I'm going to hit enter. Uh, it doesn't matter what you call it, but I'm just going to call it printing data types. And so now we can create a new script. So I'm going to click on the plus sign next to workspace and I'm going to search up script just like this and I'm going to insert a regular script just like this. So I'm also going to click on the script, right click it and I'm going to rename this one to uh, the name of this episode which is going to be variables. So now that we have that taken care of, I'm just gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can see it better. And I'm also going to X out of our previous script inside of the script um, editor like this. And now we should be at the normal game and also uh, have the variables tab right up here. So now that we have this taken care of, let me introduce you what a variable is. So a variable is basically a reference to another value. Now that's the simplest explanation I can give. So when we have a name that references a value, then we can use that name that we created that basically acts as the value that we're referencing um, with the name that we created. Now, it may seem kind of confusing to you at first, but I want to write this inside of our script so that I can um, help you understand this concept better. So what I'm going to do is select this print statement and I'm going to delete it since we don't need it. Um, now, what I want you to do is copy exactly what I type because it may be confusing to you at first. So what I want you to do in all lowercase is type in local and then what we're going to put here is a random variable name and it doesn't matter what we call this variable name. So I'm just going to say my variable like this and I'm going to put in an equal sign and I'm going to set this equal to a random uh, data type value that we worked with in the last episode. So I'm just going to say that this is 100. Now, looking at this, you might be confused. Like, what, what does this all mean? Well, to basically understand what is happening here, uh, we don't need to worry about what this local variable is right now. I'm going to explain this in a future episode. But basically what we have going on here is three components that make up this variable. So what's going on over here is this is a name that I came up with. And this variable name can be whatever name we want the variable to be. As long as we can reference it later inside of the script, then it doesn't matter what we call this. And then we have an equal sign here that basically says that we've now created a new variable that is set equal to whatever value is on the right side here, which is going to be 100. So what's interesting about this is if we drop a line down here and we make a print statement, so we um, write down print and then have the open parentheses and we put down our new variable name that we created. So we say my variable like this, then you might expect in the output to print my variable or something similar to that. But no, you might actually be surprised. If we go into the game, hit test and hit play, then what we should see in the output is actually the number 100. So if I click on this and refer back to our script that we created, it's printing out my variable. But why did it print 100? It printed 100 because my variable is simply a reference to 
the number 100 as we specified here when we created this variable. And so this is what I'm talking about when we're having a variable refer to a different data type value like this. And this is really powerful to know. Um, and it's going to be one of the most important concepts to understand uh, when we do create variables that reference other values. Now, why do we need to know this? Well, if we were to hit stop so that we're out of playtest mode, and if I were to go back into the script, I want you to imagine that we have a scenario that if I were to make a print statement like this and then print five, drop a line down here. And if I were to print five again, just like this and drop a line. And if I were to print five once again, just like this, then it's then it's going to be kind of repetitive. And what if we wanted to change uh, all of these values, then we would have to go back and change the value for each single one of these numbers. But instead, what if we had an easier way to do this? And that would simply just be replacing this data type with a variable that is referencing a value. So all we need to do is change this value and it's going to change everything else that is going to be inside of this print statement that uses the variable that we just created. So if I were to basically copy this code right here, so if I were to select this and then right click, hit copy, and then I were to, and if I were to drop a line down here and I were to right click on this and then hit paste, then it's going to paste the same line that we just had that we copied. And I'm going to do the same thing down here by hitting enter and then hitting paste just like this. So I'm also going to delete these lines right here so that it's not gonna get in the way of our script. So when we have our variable be like this, we go into the game, hit play, then what we should see in the output is 100 being printed three different times because it's using the same variable that's referencing this data type of 100. If we hit stop and we go back into our script and then change this one value, this one value to let's say 50, then we go back into the game and hit play, then what we should see in the output is 50 being printed every single time. We only had to change this one value uh, to affect all three of these print statements rather than having to change each individual print statement to change that one value. That's a very basic way of how I can explain how variables work inside of Studio, and this is going to be very important for us to understand later down the line. Now, there's a certain naming convention that I would like you to use, and that's basically how we write these variables. So usually what I do is what's called camel case, and so I would basically have the first letter of the first word be in lowercase, and then have the first letter of every other word be in uppercase um, while the rest of it is just in lowercase. So if I were to extend this even further, I could say my variable is 50, just like this. This is how we would create the variable. Now, as you can see down here, um, these print statements are throwing an error saying unknown global my variable. And that's because we no longer have a variable that we created called my variable is 50. So what we need to do is update these variables to say my variable is 50. And as you can see, Roblox is recommending us to use this variable right here. So if we want to complete this rather than type the whole thing out, we can just type in tab and Roblox is going to add this in for us. And we can do the same thing here as well. So if we select this and say is 50, then we can just hit tab and Roblox is going to uh, correct it for us. So is 50. And then just like that, we have our variable taken care of. So if we hit play, then we can still see that the output is printing the value 50 after referencing our variable, my variable is 50. So that's the basics of using variables inside of your scripts. What I want you to do for today's learning objective is to create more variables and set them equal to different data types. So it doesn't have to just be numbers. It can also be Booleans and, can, and it can also be strings. So I want you to have these references down and be able to print them inside of the output right here and be able to make print statements to print them effectively so we can show them inside of the output. So I want you to try and do that for this learning objective. And once you do, I want you to go down to the comment section and show what you did for this challenge since I do look at all my comments um, for my videos. So it'd be very nice to see what you're doing for this episode as we go through this tutorial guide. So that's pretty much gonna be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next episode. Take care.